Hi, I'm here with the Vice President of Broadcom's Wireless Connectivity Division to discuss the future of Wi-Fi and the company's role in ushering in that future. Vijay, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having me here, and I am pretty excited for the conversation today. Me too. So actually, let's start a bit broadly. What is Broadcom's view of Wi-Fi? Sure. Uh, so as you know, Broadcom is a Wi-Fi first company. So we've had tremendous success in Wi-Fi in the last couple of decades or so. We've launched several generations of Wi-Fi with first to market solutions, most recent being the Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7 launches. We've actually launched over 7 billion Wi-Fi Bluetooth combos to date, and uh, we've shipped over a billion Wi-Fi 6, 6 devices today, each of which is a milestone on its own. As far as what Wi-Fi means for us, I think two things. One, increasingly Wi-Fi is becoming synonymous with broadband. So you're having more and more uh, services uh, that are offering multi-gigabit broadband to your homes, and Wi-Fi is a technology that takes that and brings it to your hands, to your PCs, to your phones, and to your t televisions. Uh, second, Wi-Fi is extremely complementary to another wireless technology, cellular 5G. Wi-Fi is effective in bringing 5G services to your home, wherever you are. Um, personally, for me, Wi-Fi is the modern-day elixir. It's like water. It's like air. You need it for your very survival. And I think that's actually true more so in our post-pandemic life. Now, I know you're uh, pretty big on the Wi-Fi rebranding that happened a few years back. Can you briefly share that backstory? Sure thing. I mean, we're we're very excited about it. We believe that the uh, rebranding that happened that included generational nomenclature is an important event for the Wi-Fi industry. The concept that six is better than five and seven is better than six is a very, very simple message to actually give to our consumers. Now, Broadcom's been big fans of this and we're among the first to recognize this. When we launched 11AC, we branded our chips 5G Wi-Fi because it was the fifth generation of Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, at that time, we couldn't coalesce the industry around the generational nomenclature. So when 11AX happened, we tried again together with a bunch of like-minded companies. And uh, we were able to get that to happen. It was a very, very heavy lift, but the outcome was fantastic. You know, today people talk about Wi-Fi more so than they have in the last, you know, three, five years. Um, and uh, they talk about Wi-Fi in the context of cellular technologies. Each time somebody says, Wi-Fi 6 or 6E or 7 is complementary to 5G. That is a success for this branding effort. And each time I'm able, able to go to my mom or any other consumer and have them buy the latest routers by simply saying 6 is better than 5, that's success for this branding effort as well. So another huge development in Wi-Fi is 6 gigahertz, of course. So what benefits do 6 gigahertz bring to consumers and, and what does it mean for Broadcom? The 6 gigahertz journey has been long and fulfilling for us. Um, it really started off as an idea about six years ago, and since then, it's been a global jaunt for us and a bunch of like-minded companies trying to make this happen. So I was personally involved with the work that FCC did and uh, worked together with Chairman Ajit Pai back then, uh, trying to demonstrate to him what the value of 6 gigahertz is, what he was going to bring to the market. Now, when uh, the FCC under his leadership opened up 1,200 megahertz of spectrum in April 2020, that was historic, and that just created a momentum, a global momentum to go make six gigahertz Wi-Fi happen. Now, why is six gigahertz Wi-Fi important? Very simple. It's pristine spectrum that really allows devices to make the best use of the spectrum and uh, getting you top speeds and very, very low latencies. Uh, six gigahertz allows us to uh, optimally use the concepts of OFDMA, for example, which are uh, inherent to Wi-Fi 6. From a Broadcom standpoint, the need for six gigahertz together with technologies like mesh, that's really led to uh, a, a growth in the access segment. We've seen uh, a growth in the number of radios in your homes uh, because you've needed radios to operate in six, five, and 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, especially given your need for better and better Wi-Fi post-pandemic, we've absolutely seen a market that's growing super fast for us. So effectively, the benefits for of six gigahertz is available there for the consumer, but it's also available for uh, people like us that make devices that operate in this band. 
So this in turn has catalyzed adoption overall and has worked out quite well for all the stakeholders. Okay, and six gigahertz was first introduced with Wi-Fi 6E. So why do we need Wi-Fi 7? Great question again. Uh, the way I'd like to answer this, Kat, really is every generation of Wi-Fi was uh, designed keeping in mind the uh, use cases that would be in vogue two, three, four years since. Take, for example, Wi-Fi 5 or 11 AC. It was devised to handle video streaming. Think of all the OTT devices, the streaming devices that have come into the market and into your living homes, living spaces since. Um, Wi-Fi 6, again, is important because it took into account not just download traffic, but also upload traffic. And that was important since 2018, 2019. Think Zoom, think WebEx, um, think of all the cloud streaming and upload you do. So all of that's facilitated by Wi-Fi 6. Wi-Fi 7 takes us up a notch. Uh, it is designed for latency critical applications, latency critical use cases, think gaming, think futuristic AR, VR devices. Together with the fact that your homes tomorrow will have numerous devices that need to be serviced at the same time. So you need network capacity, you need low latencies, each of which is facilitated by Wi-Fi 7. Wi-Fi 7 improves network capacity by about five times. And in critical cases, we've seen latencies improve by a couple of orders of magnitude. Incredible, incredible KPIs driven by you know, exciting features like MLO, multi-link operation, together with this concept called automated frequency coordination or AFC. Okay, yeah, let's talk about both of those things a little bit more. Uh, what is MLO and how will that help uh, or benefit the end user specifically? MLO, multi-link operation, um, I typically explain this with a highway analogy. Uh, so if you are in San Jose like me and you want to travel to San Francisco, there are a couple of different highway options you could take, Highway 101 or Highway 280. And if you're like me, dependent on Google Maps, you're constantly looking at Google Maps, trying to figure out which highway gets you to San Francisco faster. Uh, so, And then you end up picking up the fastest highway to San Francisco. One day it could be 101, the other day it could be 280. But the end objective is to get you to San Francisco at the fastest possible time. MLO is similar to that. It makes sure that the data between the router and the client travel through the fastest available channel. And you can imagine what happens uh, after that. It ensures that each of these devices behave very effectively and very efficiently in the channel. So your overall network capacity increases. And also because your data goes through quickly from your access point to your client and vice versa, it has tremendously better latencies. So hopefully this explains what MLO is in uh, easy terms. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate that. Okay, and now AFC, why should we care about that? Sure. Now, AFC uh, or automated frequency coordination is important because today your six gigahertz devices in a lot of geographies are allowed to operate only in indoors. And this is because there are critical technologies or services that share the spectrum that Wi-Fi use but are rarely uh, operating. So you want an AFC figures out whether these technologies or services are operating at any given time and signals to the router. The router determines then whether it can operate at a higher power level if these critical services are absent. And this can happen both indoors and outdoors. So AFC brings you both indoor and outdoor uh, six gigahertz Wi-Fi, effectively making six gigahertz Wi-Fi more pervasive, meaning it actually um, brings you the six gigahertz Wi-Fi to its fullest potential. And for my last question, Vijay, I kind of want to bring it back to Broadcom. So what's next for the company uh, when it comes to Wi-Fi? So what's next for Broadcom when it comes to Wi-Fi? I think it's pretty simple. It's a couple of things. One is um, we've announced the Wi-Fi 7 ecosystem of chips back in April. Our immediate goal really is to make sure that we're working with our customers and partners to take this to production. So we've been feverishly working with a bunch of our customers and partners, uh, productizing it into end devices that would be launched in the second half of 23. That's our immediate goal. Two, of course, we have to start thinking about what's next. So Wi-Fi 8 is in the horizon, even though that'll see the light of day in five, six, seven years, we as innovators have to start thinking about it right now. And that's what a bunch of our engineers are doing. Amazing. Thank you so much, Vijay. 
Thanks, Kat. Thanks for having me today. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. 